Hello again. I've been asked by several students to do an example showing how to do more circle in three dimensions, so I'd like to do that now. If you remember, in order to draw more circle, you have to have a stress element. So I'm going to use this for my stress element. Let's assume these numbers came from some calculation somewhere. We don't have time to do that, so I just wrote the numbers down. Okay, sigma x, stress on the x face of the uh, stress element, is 200 megapascals. The normal stress on the y face is 100 megapascals. The shear stress on the x face is 50 megapascals, and the shear on the y face is minus 50. Now, if you remember, uh, tau xy and tau yx have to be equal and opposite. If they weren't, there'd be a net moment here, and this wouldn't be static anymore. This would be rotating. And again, if you want to remember the, the, the terminology here, tau xy means x face, uh, shear stress in the y direction, and this means y face, shear stress in the x direction. Okay? So that's why you have yx and xy, or a way to remember it anyway. Now, there's one thing that maybe we haven't thought about yet, and then we assume this is plain stress. Okay, now I've made a couple of notional stress elements here. Let's pretend this is a stress element. Now this thing is actually about 100 millimeters on a side, about 4 inches, and just about nothing in that direction, so we can call this a plane, planar element. Um, this is what we normally think of when we talk about a stress element. When we're drawing 2D Morse circle, this is kind of the notion we have, should have in mind. Um, magnetic, which is nice. Okay, this is really what a plane stress element might look like notionally. I made this one to have some uh, z uh, dimension. This is not strictly planar anymore. Okay, we have the x and the y uh, dimensions that haven't changed, but now I do have a z dimension, and it's uh, about six millimeters or so. And the reason I did it this way is that when we assume plane stress, we assume there are stresses in the x and the y direction, but we also assume plane stress means there's no stress in the z direction. There is a z dimension now, but the stress in the z direction, sigma z, is zero. That's what plane stress means. Now, there's a related concept called plane strain, where there's no strain in the z direction, but there may be stress. So this is not that. This is plane stress. It's related to plane strain, not the same thing, though. Okay. Now, let's start here. Let's start with a truly two-dimensional problem. That's this. And we're going to draw a 2D Morse circle. I'm going to extend it to 3D by acknowledging that sigma 3, or sigma z, I should say, is 0. All right? Now, let's, uh, the 2D Morse circle is pretty easy to draw, but let's go through that here. Now, we've got uh, 200 megapascals and 50 megapascals on the uh, X face. So we're going to draw the X face first. I want to make sure I've got the, in the frame here. Okay, we can just about do that. All righty. Um, in fact, let me, well, let's just leave this like this. Okay, I've got the x in the x direction, or I'm sorry, in the x face. Okay, there's my first data point 200 megapascals and 50 megapascals, and that looks about right. Alrighty. Now, on the y face, I have 100 megapascals normal stress and minus 50 shear. Okay, so that's going to be right about there. Now, just, just to remember, I think we know this, but just to remember, we've got this being the normal stress and this being the shear stress. These are not x, y axes. These, this is a sigma tau axis. And the reason uh, Moore's insight was so useful is he realized a long time ago that if you take the equations that describe rotating stress, uh, of the rotation of a stress element, I guess, and you plot them on these axes, you get a circle. Well, you've got to remember when this was done. This was done before there were calculators and before there were computers. So in a world where you're doing all your calculations with a slide rule and your tools include a compass and a ruler, and graph paper, being able to make a meaningful calculation using drafting tools and a slide rule, that's a big deal. That's very, very useful. And it turns out to be useful now, mostly for educational purposes. Usually we have computers do the, this calculation. But it's very, very instructive for a student to do this calculation uh, during the learning process here while we're still learning about strength of materials. Now, if I'm trying to draw a circle, like I'm trying to draw here, if I know the location of the center of the circle and its radius, I know everything there is to know about a circle. Okay? 
Well, there's the center right there, and the center always has to lie on this normal stress axis because that and that are equal and opposite, tau xy and tau yx. If you're drawing a Morse circle and it's not on this horizontal axis, it's up or down, stop. Something's wrong. Okay. So let's draw this here. There's my diameter, and I kind of missed there, but that's pretty close. Um, so I'm connecting the, X, the points I drew for the x face and the y face. All right. That's 50, that's 50, and that's a radius there, whatever that is. Okay. Well, since my horizontal distance from the center is 50 and my vertical distance is 50, that means this must be 45 degrees, and R must be 50 times square root of 2. Actually, let me put some units on there. And that works out to 70.71 megapascals. Okay? So there we go. Now we know the radius. Okay? Got the radius, got the center of the circle. Everything else is pretty easy. Now let me erase this here and I'll try to sketch in a circle. Um, because the center point is halfway between the minimum x stress and the maximum x stress, this is going to be 150. So if we wanted to uh, calculate sigma bar, that's 150 megapascals. Okay? And let me try to sketch in this circle here. This is going to be about like that. And let's see, that's 250. Okay, this is. Boy, that's pretty close, I guess. Okay, well, that's why we use compasses, I guess. That's pretty close. You can see what's going on here. So, tau max now is the radius, and that's going to be 70.71. So, we already know that. Okay. Okay, this is going to be my maximum stress, my maximum normal stress. We're going to call that the first principal stress, sigma 1, and that is 220.71 megapascals. Okay? Hopefully I got that on the frame. Boy, just barely. Okay? So you can see that, 220.71 megapascals. Sigma 2 is going to be the minimum normal stress on that stress element. Okay? And also, let's, let's stop here real quick. That's 45 degrees, right? That means that I drew the stress element this way. That is 2 phi. 2 times the angle I would need to rotate through for this x face to see that stress. Okay? Well, this is 2 phi on this, or it's 45 degrees on this axis. In physical geometric axes, it would be half that, 22.5. So if this were my stress element, and I were to rotate it clockwise, 22.5 degrees, half of that, this face would see that stress. So I drew it this way out of convenience. That was just probably how I had my coordinate system defined. And let's call that 22.5 degrees. If I rotate this element clock counter, I'm sorry, clockwise, 22.5 degrees, the X face now sees 220 point seven megapascals, okay? Now, the, the sigma two, the minimum possible normal stress, is going to be 150 megapascals minus the radius. Okay, when you do that, you get, uh, let's see, 79.29 megapascals. Okay, that's 150 minus 70.71. All right, so that's sigma two, okay? Now, let me get this out of the way here. We need to take time now to acknowledge that we're now dealing with a planar element, or almost planar element, something that has a third dimension, but that sigma z is now is zero. Okay? Plain stress. There is no stress in this direction. There's normal stress in this direction, normal stress in this direction, normal stress in this direction, my z direction is zero. Okay? Because I have three norm three uh, geometric dimensions and I have three possible normal stresses, I have more possible shear stresses than I had before. Rather than just shear stresses between that direction and that direction, now I have ones relating any of the three directions. Okay, So there is now a tau zx possibly and a tau zy. All right? So let's start drawing more circles 
we've got one that relates sigma 1 and sigma 2. And for this case where we have plane stress and sigma 2 and sigma 1 are both positive, that's important, that's underlying all of this. The reason I can draw this circle like I'm about to draw it is that sigma 3, or sorry, sorry sigma 1 is bigger than sigma 2, sigma 2 is bigger than sigma 3, and sigma 3 is 0. That's underlying all this. That's the assumption, right? So I'm going to, because I've got all these assumptions uh, satisfied, I'm going to know that's true. Okay? I know sigma 3 is 0. So now I'm going to draw a more circle. Boy, still pretty marginal, but there you go. A more circle that relates sigma, let me get rid of some of these numbers here too, these are kind of in the way now. Okay, so now I've got a more circle that relates sigma 2 to sigma 1 and sigma 3 to sigma 2. Now the, the, the tau max on this circle is half the, the distance between sigma 2 and sigma 3, right? That distance is 79.29. So the maximum shear stress on this circle, half of that is, let's see, 39.65 more or less, 64 something. All right. If I can draw more circle between sigma 2 and sigma 1, and sigma 3 and sigma 2, it makes sense that I ought to be able to draw one between sigma 3 and sigma 1, and I can. Okay, so let's, let's remove some of the excess stuff here, and let's draw that circle in and see what we get. Okay. Okay, let's put this in. That was uh, 220.71 megapascals. And sketch in this third more circle now. Okay. Now, the maximum stress according to this one is now different. It's more than the, than the uh, maximum shear stress I had before. So again, maximum shear stress is going to be the radius of a circle, but now it's the radius of this bigger circle and it's going to be half of 220.71, so it's 110.36, basically. I'm rounding off to, I'm using five significant figures, so that, that, that's actually what happens when you carry that calculation out. By acknowledging that I want to work in three dimensions now, and assuming that I have plain strain, and assuming that Sigma 1 is positive, it's bigger than sigma 2, and that sigma 3 is 0. This third more circle allows me to relate sigma 1 to sigma 3. And according to this larger circle, tau max is now 110.36 megapascals, more than my original 70.71. So this is the, the shear stress, ma maximum shear stress you'd see in a 3D sense.